go. I think we're good. Are you kidding me right now? Oh my God. We're live. Bye. Bye. We're live. <laughs> I haven't heard this song in a year. In a year. We're live. Oh my gosh. We're going to do it, Ange. You and me, a year older. There's two people watching, and you know Eric Burkert's one of them! <laughs> Eric Burkert! Yes. I'm giving him a virtual hug right now. The first one here! Oh, Eric Burkert, bless you, man. You're awesome. And Scout Underhill and Shirley Holy cow, that's a name from the past. <laughs> Dean Baxendale, Laura Granger. Yes. Thank you for joining us. Jill Suzanne Shipman. Bow, bow, bow. <laughs> Christopher Lee Clark. Oh my gosh. David May. Let's give it up. And starring David May as the funny sidekick. Not to mention Andy Wright. But the music. The music is here. With a musical score by Thomas Hoffelder. With I guest appearances, really it up today. with Grimnal Gargoyle, and wait, this is the dramatic part. This dun dun dun, dun dun, and Lee Edward Foddy and Alfonso Morales. We're all here. We did it, Ange. We did We this. survived another year. You know what's amazing? When I think back on twenty twenty and what a crazy year that was. That's all behind us now. We're all wait twenty twenty. That's we're, like two years ago. No, that's you know that those crazy <laughs> pandemic times. We're so far past that now. We're in a we're all in a much better, healthier place. We're all doing we're all doing amazing now, right? Oh, that's it. Yeah. That's how so we're doing. A whole new world now. Yeah, you know, pandemic. No more pandemic. Everything's good, right? We're good. We're good. <laughs> we're good. I guess we're good. I uh, I, I appreciate your optimism, Tony. Oh, uh, I'm trying. I'm hanging on. Sometimes some days it's by a thread. Other days it's by an anchor, but I'm hanging on. Um, everybody, it's been way, way, way too long. I apologize. I apologize, but I'm happy to be back. I, Ange, I think today's episode's what? Just catch up? Not like catch up you drink, but I mean, it could be catch up you drink. It could be catch up or cat. Is it cat soup? It's one of okay. those things. It's, oh, update. Never mind. It's update. It's update. 2021. Uh, <laughs> update update no, 2020. No, no. 2022. Update 2020. Year um, wait, you. we looked on um, the last time we were live, and it was, I am sad to say, literally almost a year ago. It was January 10th of 2021. Um, and that's kind of sad. I'm sorry. We have been busy. We've been so busy. Um, I, we've been busy working on books. We've been wor working on um, uh, the Wandla animated TV series, which is amazing looking and bonkers. And then, of course, we had the big announcement. Wait, you drink ketchup? <laughs> Who doesn't drink ketchup? <laughs> Everybody drinks ketchup. It is. Is it a liquid? Like, what is ketchup considered? A gel? <laughs> well, in Dungeons and Dragons, it would be an ochre jelly or a slime. And frankly, I'm surprised there's not some kind of a ketchup drinking monster it's or a, a monster made for fried items. It is a vehicle and a garnish and a condiment. Not really a garnish, I suppose. Not a, condiment. a garnish. Let's talk about um, some other crazy news that launched. I'm talking about what Spiderwick. Um, hold on, stupid phone. I think it turned. <laughs> Did it turn? It turned, didn't it, Ange? I don't know. It looks. It looked okay on my end, but is it still horizontal? It's vertical on mine. Oh, God. No. Oh, no. No, I, it was fine. Now is it turned? It's fine. Really? Not on mine. On mine, it's fine. Okay. Never mind. Okay. I mean, that is how it should look, right? I don't know. Nope. Oh, man. Now oh, we're... Zachary Grover, you, we brought him to tears over this announcement. Wow. Which, oh, the tea. I thought that you meant that about ketchup. Yes, well, oh, you, know. you mean the Spiderwick TV show? Spiderwick TV show is is certainly uh, quite exciting. Um, for the life of me, Ange, I cannot zoom out. I'm literally like Grandpa Old Man now using this phone. What are you Every time doing? we try to go live, it just—I don't know—it just it does. looks fine on my end. 
I'm glad it does for Does fun. it look fine? Just oh, stop it doing it. It looks fine. Everyone said it looks fine. Stop okay, touching okay. it. Stop touching it. <laughs> I will stop. Um, it looks fine. Okay, good to know. Um, yes, yeah, so we had some crazy news early. This this was also boil a slow boil that took years and years. We're incredibly excited for a live action Spiderwick uh, series um, put together by um, Paramount Pictures, who uh, or Paramount Television, who who also produced the live action movie years and years ago. And they've uh, teamed up with Fox, and it's going to be streamed on Disney Plus. Come so on, we're pretty come on, pretty excited. It should be pretty crazy. Holly and I are very excited. Holly and I are very involved, and um, you know, fingers crossed that you uh, you all feel the same way about it. Um, so it's a big. There's a lot of spider wick. Are and you going to make a cameo? Jason Alona said, "Are you going to make a cameo in the show as a voice?" Um. Wow, not not showing my face. He's just like, go for the... You've got a, a face for radio, Tony, <laughs> is what Jason Alona is saying. And you know what, Jason? In some ways, you're right, because... So last week... He said, or in person. Or in person. So last week, I'm just going to give you just a general... Oh, no. Um, you're you know, not drawing this. I'm going to draw it in my old, you know, whatever I kind of... Old man me. Um, uh, this and a hoodie that I've worn for two straight years. So last, I'm doing all the health stuff that I should have done two years ago. Oh, you really have turned into an old man. Now you're telling people about health things. <laughs> Metamucil. I used to make fun of people for eating that. And now, now I know why. No, um, I, so I, ha you know, growing up in Florida, I had to, I go to the dermatologist now. Oh. And um, I really, I'm telling you, this is, this is me with a haircut, by the way. It is. Well, it's falling out, Ange. That's 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 <laughs> part the of the colors right though. The colors right, the glasses are right, the jowl, the kind of jowl. The nose is more old manish. Wait, Reem says, Oh my gosh, the first time I've made a live stream and Mr. DiGelisi doesn't sound at all like I imagined he would. Oh man, I, I'm sorry to let, let you down. <laughs> uh, <laughs> there'd be bags under the eyes. Okay, so Alfonso, what's up? So um so yes, just Jason, just so you know, like I, so I went to the dermatologist <laughs> last week. Not to be confused with the proctologist. That's next week. That's next week. That's that's where that happens. And this, <laughs> then this face, then this kind of turns into a, uh, <laughs> and then the eyebrows are more like this. Um, anyway, so I go because I grew in Flor grew up in Florida. We have to generally check for like skin cancer and things like that because you know we just grew up in the sun. So I'm there, and I have these little moles all over my all over my body. To be honest with you, um, they are. <laughs> yeah. It's, no, it's not as bad as you're making it out. No, Let's they're be, called they're no, called no, no. angionomas. Everything you do has the word ang in it, <laughs> <laughs> and it's red, just like your hair. They're little tiny red moles. They're they're tiny. They're like literally. <laughs> Like that. They're like a little tiny. That's two size. That's two scale. Two size. I'm sure I have one on my... I know I have them on my arms. I'm not going to... I'm not going to gross you out. Anyway, um, they're benign. They're harmless. Emily Martin said, thank you for sharing these vulnerable moments. I am... See, I leave for a year and now I'm just a, a, a shivering... I think you forgot how to socialize is the problem. <laughs> I really forgot how to socialize. <laughs> if I'm telling you about my angionomas. I mean, I mean when your opening is your is moles, that, honey. It's literally like someone poured out a bunch of, a jar of pimentos in bed and <laughs> no, I slept in not. them. No, it's not. They're not that big. <laughs> anyway, I had them lasered off last if I, week. Can I take a photo and then post no, it? No, you people? cannot. <laughs> I had them lasered off last week. Now I'm thinking, oh, it's a laser, which means I'm going to have a laser burn like that. No, the laser burn is about this <laughs> big and it's like this. I came home like this. I'm not exaggerating. <laughs> I had one by my eye. I had a thing on my nose. That is... Tom Hoffelder said, I don't want this junk pot. <laughs> <laughs> Look, and it just... It, even the paper is trying to slink away. So, yes, face for radio. Anyway, there's my my health catch-up. We're all good with that now that we all understand. Yeah, I don't am, tune in next week for I'm, the proctologist I'm appointment. I'm smiling now, but it was uh, <laughs> it was sad. Anyway... Will I? Will uh, we have a cameos in Spider? Who knows? Maybe we'll try. I'll ask. I'll beg. We start borrow. filming in August. 
we we do um, do start filming this year, so oh, where everyone's oh. looking forward to that, we're excited, and uh, we'll see how it goes. I'll, I'm sure I'll be able to share more updates as it progresses. Um, speaking of um, Spiderwick, next year, Ange, is the 20th anniversary. 20th what? anniversary of the Spiderwick Chronicles. How is that possible? I don't know, but for our viewers... How, I, how many moles is that? In that was years? like 150 <laughs> moles ago, if we were counting in mole years. I pulled up some... This is really kind of fun. I, I've been kind of categorizing and organizing. This is... Um, and uh, because my phone is acting wonky, I don't... Your I'm phone's not wonky. Your phone is... I'm looking at yours to see how it works. But if I zoom in, mm -hmm. I'm hoping that the phone sees that. The date is January 29th. It's it's Saturday. 20 years ago exactly, I was drawing Stop it. Jared and Simon 20 years ago, almost to the day. That's insane. So I wanted to share just these little cachet of sketches uh, regarding Spiderwick. Here's Mallory. We'd figured out kind of who Mallory was. They should even get a little bit of a start of her. Her fencing mask. What's the date on that same, same day? Same day. I, I did both of these. Today, I would draw these three things and call it a day. I'd be done for the day. <laughs> but back then, we've got an early Mulgarath. He's got kind of a haircut. Same day also? Same day also, I believe. Yeah, I think so. Hello, children. Uh, here you go, Thimbletack. Now, I had drawn Thimbletack a number of times. This is a fairly close to final design, but also drawn on the same day. And a uh, a hog squeal, also drawn on the same day, but a, a a culmination of a lot of sketchings. This is an early hog squeal. This is when he had the cat clock eyes. Those you know those cat clocks where the eyes oh the ones that hang go, in your kitchen. They the go eyes back go back and, and forth. forth. I love they, they really creep me out. And I we did have one, didn't we? Yeah. And that was kind of the early inspiration for hog squeal. So the books were being designed. Certainly, they were there was a version of them written at this point. And some of these characters were designed uh, just for fun added. So it looks like a couple months later in April, I started really focusing on the house. Um, this was rare. This was in the thing. This was a version of ha uh, Thimbletack as a bogger, which never made it into the final book. And a very uh, mm -hmm. early Mulgrath. This is probably done in January at the same time. Someone's phone it number. Is. Don't call that number. I don't know who that is. <laughs> um, and then the refining of... Hog squeal happened, it looks like, in July, where he became a little closer to the hog squeal we all know and love. So that was kind of neat, um, kind of looking at these old drawings from almost exactly 20 years ago. Um, we're we're going to do, um, I'm going to do updated covers. We're going to go back to the original artwork. I think, remember, Ange, 10 years ago, I did, like, these new covers for the books. Wait, Joelle has a newborn baby. It's been that long. Did you actually get pregnant and have a baby in the amount of time? Did you name the baby Angela or Tony? <laughs> I'm just curious to, to know, Joelle. Um, congratulations. Congratulations. That's Or is Dumbledore. Born to fantasy. Born to fantasy. We're drawn. Joelle was born to fantasy. Um, to celebrate all this spider wickness and wandlaness, we're going to do... Um, uh, freshened up the covers, and remember I did those covers 10 years ago for the 10-year anniversary of Spiderwick, and where I kind of did new art. We're going to go back to the original art, but we're going to do new design, and we're going to use this updated logo that I created for the show. Um, so we're super excited I about I love that logo. What do you guys think of it? Yeah, I let know us know. it's different from the original book logo, but the show has its own identity, so we thought it would be appropriate to redesign the actual logo as well. Yeah. So everybody highly love this logo. The folks at Simon Schuster, the folks involved with the show, everybody seemed to really like it. So, uh, you know, that doesn't happen too often, Angie. I usually have to go through uh, a lot well, to get a, a decent that logo. Well, was very exciting. Yeah, I have to. Well, we have, let's do a, um, I have to do a fit, more finished version of this logo. We should do that as a stream, and I can show the inspiration of where I found this font. It was an old... Um, uh, typesetting I found uh, from the turn of the century. That would be a fun one to do. Uh, we this is a, a, a long-winded way of telling you all that we are we will be coming back live more this year as I work on some of these um, projects, including the new uh, jackets for Wandla and um, and something. And I'm to answer your questions, yes, 
Tony has been very involved in both of these projects. Very involved, yes. And as if that wasn't enough, um, because I'm completely crazy and because I am, I'm always about quality, right, Angela? Like, I am like probably for better or for worse, I am a stickler for making sure the quality of things is is the type such that I would be um, excited about as a kid. Um, there's so many things to talk about, so I don't even know how to get to this point. But I want to say that, you know, last year was was rough in that we had to say goodbye to a lot of really close friends. Um, and and I, th you'll get where I'm going, why this, I'm literally jumping from I one thing like, to what? another. Well, because we, we said goodbye about, to Norton. Can we talk about moles more? I mean, this sounds <laughs> like it's going to get sad. No, but I'm thinking of Eric Carl specifically. Yes. And you know where I'm going to go with this, why I bring up Eric Carl. We had to say goodbye to Eric, who is such an incredible inspiration. He's one of the reasons, one of the main reasons we live where we live here in Massachusetts because of his museum that he opened. But one of the things Eric told me, which was really, really cool, was that he re-illustrated The Very Hungry Caterpillar every few years, and then they would rescan the art just to keep the quality the highest quality possible. That's really stuck with me. And so when I think about the um, Spiderwick's field guide, Ange, and we had worked on it, you know, it's it's not quite 20 years old. It's coming close to it. But at the time, we my knowledge of Photoshop was limited. Um, I, I pushed as hard as I could to um, get everything. Hold on, we're going to get the phone. Just turn it upwards a little bit. Hoping that catches it. Hold on, I'm just doing a camera adjustment. It's okay. You don't have to do that on the. Yeah, don't worry about what's on the screen. I'd say that looks perfect. That look good. Mm -hmm. Do I need to just slide it this way a little bit? That looks better, right? Yeah. Okay, good. Um. Anyway, when we were working on uh this, we it was um what Sophia's teacher would call her the learning edge. I was I pushed myself not just with my art and painting, but with my book design and literally what I could do with a computer and creating a book. So we did a lot of things that were unconventional, a lot of things we didn't quite know how to do. All that said, the book has held up well over the years, but it has shifted. I want to show you how much it shifted. This is the troll image from Arthur Spiderwick's Field Guide. Um, and I have pulled for your viewing pleasure the actual troll piece of art. So you can see not just the detail, but hopefully see um, the loss in color and depth. And um, I don't think that's due to the printer. I think it's primarily just due to the scanning at the time. The scanners just weren't um, to the level that they are now. We can capture so much more um, color and depth, Ange, that we weren't able to do back then. Because the book was so complex, we didn't send it to the printer for scanning. They would have had the right scanners to scan this thing. Uh, I think the I think I provided all the scans. So we're going to rescan all the artwork at a higher resolution with a, a greater um, depth to it. Um, and that goes especially for these sketches. These really got lost. Uh, one of the ones that I think is worth sharing is this one here. This was one of my favorite little um, guys. Dandersnuff is one of the, the third brownie that was kind of drawn. And um, I've pulled the sketchbook where Dandersnuff came from so we can kind of see how much was really lost here. And you can really see how much detail, <coughs> excuse me, was lost. Question on the, that original, did you hit it with gloss medium or varnish? Gloss medium on the paintings, yes, because they would have been painted, they were painted in in, in gouache, uh, the acrylic gouache, so yes, they would have dried very flat, so yeah, I used the gloss medium, uh, which we've shown before. We've done that on, on the live stream before. So you can kind of see the the the, the loss in detail and, and uh, stuff in these. Um, you, not to get too nerdy and technical, the printing plates wear out after a while. Things happen when these things, when these books are printed in, in a high volume. So I'm incredibly excited to be able to go back and we're going to do just this, this new version of the field guide with all updated scans and maybe some creatures or two that didn't make it the first go around. So we're pretty excited about that. Um, speaking of books, before we draw, Ange... I had um, I had a couple books. I kept meaning to post these at Christmas. A couple books that we received from friends that I thought were really cool that I wanted to share. That I think are pretty cool. Awesome. So if you like the Spiderwick Field Guide, 
You may also like Iris competes. I hope I'm saying her compete, compete. I'm gonna go with compete. She can kill me later. Um, her Fairies in the Fault Line book, I believe this was available in a limited quantity earlier with a with a smaller publisher. She signed it, it's very nice of her. But if you like my work, if you like Brian Froud and Alan Lee's work in Fairies, if you like uh, Jean-Baptiste Monge's uh, work, then this is certainly a book that you want um, on your bookshelf. It's a beautiful, beautiful and an incredible amount of work. Iris is on, I believe, all social medias, so she's fun to watch. She paints almost every day. She sculpts as well. Just a, an incredible artist, really uh, in the spirit of, of Brian Froud and Alan Lee and um, all of the, the great Golden Age illustrators. So this book is called Fairies in the Fault Lines, and it's available from Eon Books. But you, you should be able to... Oh, Eye of Newt. Not Eon. Eye of Newt. Got some good blurbs there. She got a blurb by Guillermo del Toro, some Tony DiTolisi guy, and John Howe. So there you go. Nice. That's that's a, that's a pretty amazing uh, trinity as far as I'm concerned. Anyway, beautiful book. Great one to add to the collection. Another incredible watercolor artist who we've known for... Golly, how long have we known Larry, Ange? Like... 20 years probably. Oh my gosh, maybe more. Actually, I think more. Yeah, we've known Larry and McDougal and his, and his talented wife, uh, Pat Ann, for years. They're both incredible artists. Larry did a book, um, After My Own Heart, that is just... Now look, Larry, I'm just going to say, Iris did like a drawing and a note, and all I got from you was just signature? a signature, really. I have to tell you, for any of you published authors, illustrators, I mean, especially illustrators, Doodles go a long, long way. way in a book. Yeah. Like, Tony, when you're signing people's books, if you, I, I try You'll, to secretly send you messages to, like, do a doodle. She will kick everybody. me under the table I'll if be like, I don't. Do a drawing. It's tough, though, when it's like a, it's like a paperback and they slam down, like, 20 paperbacks. I mean, I'll pick one and try to do something, but, yeah, usually I just sign it. This, this is a world of anthropomorphic animals that is rendered at a, a just an unbelievable level larry's been painting from this world for decades i want to say i want to go there i so want to so go cozy. there look at that i mean clearly um clearly larry was an inspiration for um for kenny and the dragon i look at this stuff i i, I must have seen this early versions of this for kenny and the dragon but they certainly share the same universe and um this book is just amazing i want to i want to show i want a world uh, on a screen with all the Larrys. It's just cozy and charming and like very wind in the willows meets, that reminds me of like, you know, Disney's Robin Hood. Yeah, like, absolutely, yeah. Know, some mouse guard. like Little mouse guard, Dave Peterson, thing. absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, um, yeah, Red Wall, all those great anthropomorphic shows that we love. It's just got, it's just got a, an, 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 and again, just an unbelievable amount of work that went in. It's all these drawings, just beautifully rendered. So, cool. so this one's called Guelph. I'm the survival guide, and I think it's kind of a, you know, your your book, your guide to this land of Guelph by Larry McDougal. This one is available by Eye of Newt Books. And um, there you go. He's got some uh, Mike McNeil and Pete DeSev, so he's got some pretty amazing uh, blurbs as well. And last but not least... For all you goths out there, this is Crimson by Abigail Larson. Abigail also did a, a lovely drawing for me. Abigail's stuff has kind of got an animated feel to it. It's super gothy, super romantic. Um, I love the way she draws. I love how angular it is. This is certainly something back in my um, Planescape and Vampire when I was working for White Wolf. I would have loved having this book around for inspiration. And um, I, I love the way she draws. It's just got a really beautiful sense of design to it as well. Another super prolific artist. And also, look at this, Ange. Even the pages. I mean, it doesn't get more gothy than that. I mean, yeah, look at this thing. It's, cool. it's a beautiful... It's got that red foil on there. And big, all the black ink. So there you go. Three amazing books to add to your collection. And um, let's draw. What do you think, Ange? I think you should draw. Let's draw. Oh, and before we get to... Um, Remind me, I have, a, I have a reminder before we get to the junk pot today. Just, Ooh. Just oh, wow, the junk pot, the mole, holy moly remind junk me, pot. Remind, 
<laughs> Remind me about oh, that. Yes. That's been sitting here for, for a while. So okay. anyway, um, Ange, I'm kind of open. I don't know if we should take, um, you think requests? we should, should what we take requests thinking? or what? I mean, we can take requests. Um, or I can certainly, um, you know, you want to, if you want to start it off, you can tell me what you're thinking. I mean, it's been a year. It's been I a year. I feel like we should throw it to you guys. What do you want to see? What do you want to do? What do you want to talk about? What do we want to yeah. discuss? Well, like, let me do a little, I'm just going to sketch a little just to kind of get my brain in it. I keep thinking about those old drawings of, of, um, of hog squeal. Truth be told, T, oh, you no. have not been drawing a whole lot these days. I have not. Truth, that is the truth, and you have told it. <laughs> is, I mean, I think a lot of people just assume that, like, okay, I'm, you're an illustrator, so you're just you're drawing, drawing all every the time, day, but you're, not, you have not. I spent a good part of last year writing. I've been planning out my next middle grade novel. Um, I spent a lot of time in meetings with the folks working on these. With now, especially with with two shows in production and possibly more to come, that's kept. Both of us incredibly busy. Something spider wicky. It yeah. seems to be the request. Yeah, yeah. Well, in, I'm doing a little. In addition to Betty White, but yes, yeah, spider wick. Little and hog school. I'm doing picture. a little hog school. I haven't done. I'm looking at all this stuff with Hoggy and how much I've always loved drawing hog school. What's that like when you haven't? I mean, is the muscle memory always there, or is it challenging to access? Um. I, well, we're doing comfort food right now. I mean. Uh, challenge me to try to draw something a little more complex. I may I may fail miserably at it. You know, here I'm drawing a character I've drawn a bunch of times. Ooh, Mandalorian. <laughs> draw the Mandalorian. <laughs> you don't need me to draw that. You've got so much fan art of that and Boba Fett. By the way, speaking of great uh, TV shows and movies, holy cow, how was... how? What did you think of Coda, Ange? So we watched a, um, a, uh, a movie on Apple TV... Uh, plus today. Well, we watched it in two parts because that's how crazy busy we can't. We didn't have time to sit down and watch an entire movie um, called CODA, which stands for Children, Children of Deaf Adults. Yes, thank you. So, or child, child. Like maybe child of a deaf adult. Yeah, I think so. I Forgive me so. if I'm wrong child on that. Forgive me if I'm wrong on that. Just, uh, just pulling it. It was new to me. We both learned that. Um, an unbelievable and powerful and amazing movie. I, I got to tell you, it's probably one of my favorite movies that came out last year, even though we saw it this year. So good. So good. I, I think I just pulled myself together after this morning because I admittedly was completely sobbing. Ugly, and, ugly cry. Yeah. Well, I mean, it wasn't that ugly, was it? For me, it was. No, you weren't ugly. Huh? I was holding it in. Yeah, you were just... It's hard like, to do, though. It was... Doing the holds it in. Snot and bubble like, and all that stuff. So good. Katie Postma said, Coda is an amazing movie. It was an amazing you movie. You guys haven't watched it. If you want a good movie that's going to make you feel good, too. It's just a powerful... It just was genuine and real. Not that I don't enjoy, like, a Marvel... You know, I loved Hawkeye and... And Black Widow and shows like that too for mindless, but this one was just one that had so much heart that I really, really loved it. Anyway, um, <laughs> are you going to come out with a compilation book of your work? Oh, like an art of? And then Emily C. Martin said there is a book out from Dark House, but a uh, Dark Horse, but it's older. And it's out of print. Yeah, yeah, the Realms book is out of print. That um, Dark Horse, you know. Bless them for wanting to do a an, a book on my RPG art, but they're primarily publishers of comic book stuff, so I think they didn't quite know how to how to sell it and get it into the proper channels. So it sadly went out of print already, and we're looking for a new home for it. And I'm pretty sure we'll we'll find one. It's just going to take a little time because because will book... be something else. Maybe it won't just be like your your kind of gaming art. Maybe it'll be. Well, we we talked about like adding the some of the fantasy stuff that I would have done around that time as well, like the Hobbit cover and, uh, or not the Hobbit, the uh, Unfinished Tales and the Anne McCaffrey book and the Peter okay, Beagle. So. Yeah, there was so much fantasy stuff I was doing at that same time, that era. I feel like just a world of Tony D book. But yeah, maybe but not it's... Not yet. Not yet, soon. 
You want to talk to, I think, 60 or 70 year old Tony. And, and I feel like he's standing right here some days. But uh, anyway, you know, Hog Squeal was always kind of my, it's using, we use Star Wars speak a lot when we would do a shorthand for these archetypes. He was always kind of like the Lando. Like at first you thought he was untrustworthy, but then he turns out to be actually a really stand up guy. That was always my take <laughs> on Hog Squeal. Uh, uh, super devious. He does. What's I think the he's, eyes? He's thinking about baby teeth. And mm -hmm. that's what I think he's... Yeah, I can change it. Here, let's just get his eyebrows. Not so... Is it the eyebrows or the, the eye, eyebrows. little eyes? Uh, you know, oh, think, okay. it's the eyebrows. He's softening them up a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, he was looking pretty devious. Yeah, this early version, he has kind of the... He's kind of the mouse eyes here back in 2002. But then Holly described him with cat eyes. I remember that. So Did then you I, like Seth Rogen as the voice? Um, when they... Cast Seth Rogen as the voice. I had no idea who that was. This was 2007. I don't like know. This, this Seth Rogen guy. He's this, the new guy. I mean, if you say so, if you think that's the guy, I've never heard of him. So there you go. It was so, so far back. And I'm sure he'd done TV or film at that point, but uh, he was not a household name. Did so, you like his voice? Did I... Um, yeah, I thought he did a great job. Yeah, I'm trying to think if I could, yeah. Good bird. Yeah, it's got a bird, yeah. It sounds very Muppety. Yeah, it's him doing Muppet. The same way I liked when Mark Hamill did the audio book. He did a lot of Muppet voices, which I loved for it. Gave it that kind of Muppet <laughs> vibe. Anyway, hold on, I'm going to just uh, get a little drink of water. I'm a little, you know what, Inch? What? <coughs> haven't talked a lot like this. You're right. I find that happens to me, too. And then I get that weird dry, it's also dry here because it's dead of winter. So I, um, you know, I cough and then I, then I get scared and self-aware. Anyway, here's a, here's a hog, a hog squeal. I don't know, here is hog squeal. I mean, so I have a question. Yeah. I mean, so hog squeal's a hobgoblin. Yeah. But like, do they all kind of look like a variation of um, like, what's his relatives? What's like. Yeah, I would. I would draw them all differently. I would. I don't. Yeah, I think that's. They're all. I'm just trying to do them like a three quarter. I'm kind of warming up. He had that kind of bat. That was the big thing him with him with these kind of leaf nose bat. I kind of feel like this is. He's always kind of surly, unless there's food involved. He can just put his ears down. I can see. Um, no, I think if I had to do, um, I mean, we did do a different, another hob in the field guide mm -hmm. who did look a lot like hog squeal. I think cause I wanted hog squeal represented in the field guide, but we couldn't because there, there, there was a story. Um, it would have created a, a plot hole that if Spiderwick had met hog squeal, then there would have oh, been a plot yeah. hole with the chapter book. So we couldn't. So I think then I made the hob there feel and kind of look a lot like, like. yes like but if 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 we were to do another a second entry on hobgoblins no i would design something completely different Ooh, a vampiric nosferatu-esque hobgoblin would be amazing oh yeah it, it is it got that very bat like because i think again of creatures that come out at night i think that's all i was thinking of with him yeah, I can see that. It's got a, like a little nocturnal critter vibe. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And then he had this old jacket. I, there was a photo I had found of a of a kid in like the 1930s wearing this pea coat, and I thought, oh, that's cool. Like Hogsquill would have found that discarded in the 1930s and would still be wearing it because he's you know however many years old. Let's see. Let's try to draw him again. I feel like those warm ups were okay. I don't know if they were like junk junk pot worthy Ange. I feel like we could do it again. Let me just try. Or if I was to draw another uh hob that I know they're small. Um, you know, I would look at more I don't know, bats and frogs and maybe it'd be interesting to do one that's kinda I guess certainly our pug goblin was probably on my mind. Yeah, it'd that be funny to very goblin. That that's kind of fun to do one like that where it's just got these really long. And that'd be kind of a fun hob. 
And I think the bad ears are only because of the, I'm thinking of, again, nighttime, it can hear. But, you know, you could, you know, there was there was a point where ho hog squeal had a little tiny nose and those big eyes. So maybe that's. How do you research, Amelia Pendleton asks, how do you research different mythical creatures to use in your stories? Um, you know, I think the first uh, rule for Spiderwick was, um, have I heard of it? Do I do I kind of know what it is, whether from maybe popular culture or through video games and role playing games and movies and comic books? Like, was it? You know, we've all heard of a hobgoblin or a hob. Um, so I liked that was kind of the start of it, and I realized that saying that means a lot of them were these kind of. In, you know, English, Wales, Irish, Scot, you know, Scottish, and and Eurocentric folk creature, folklore creatures of folklore. Um, it didn't really dive deep into you know the rich mythology and folklore of Asia, or Africa, um, or other parts of the world. Um, but that's, I guess, just growing up in a, as you know, a kid in the seventies and eighties. Those were the those were the critters I knew more so that's where we kind of Holly and I kind of started there and um, we did talk about branching out and doing um, other creatures of myth and folklore from from other parts of the world but it, it would made the spiderwick field guide like so unwieldy like I don't even know how we could have accomplished that if we started representing from other parts of the world and then the the bigger question was I don't know if we should have you know, if it was really art, they were our stories to tell, you know, that, that, you know, going on and, uh, as much as I wanted to draw a Kieran, so I love, I love the, the mythology of a Kieran, the, that's the, uh, the unicorn of Asia, Ange. Recently seen in, they did some really cool ones in, um, Shang-Chi, which you didn't watch in the Ten no, Rings. They did, there were Kieran's in that, it was pretty cool. Anyway, here's like another hob, I don't know what this guy, it's, I feel like this guy's like a Bartleby or some kind of creature he's he's definitely more sullen than Bartleby, Hob. that's his name i don't know yeah he just looks like just like chud bartleby <laughs> i don't even know if i spelled his name right he's also he's a bart lb i don't i don't know if i spelled it right um yeah yeah he's bartleby maybe he's got these kind of ears that's kind of fun kind of more bigger yeah what so so, you know, yeah, maybe this is maybe where I'd go for, so there was a lot of this kind of just, um, kind of exploration and these are pretty cartoony, like they're not very realistic, but part of the rule for Spiderwick was kind of exaggerated anatomy skinned in as realistic as I could paint. And then I would, I would bring it in if I needed to, but I don't know. Does Bartleby wear any clothes, Ange? What do you think? I'm gonna throw it to you guys. Is Bartleby wearing clothes? Is he wearing Bartleby? Something. I mean, that seems like kind of a formal name. Yeah. Well, look at him. He's very like, formal. I feel like like a little circus performer. He's like <laughs> the great Bartleby. Yeah, you could. I could see him with the circus. Oh man, see that's a great story. Like, what if he was in in like Ringling Brothers, like way back when, and escaped? Like that's he. That's funny. Like he was a um he was the dog. Like the he glamoured himself as like a dog that could do all the tricks, and he's got the 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 collar, but he can't get it off. <laughs> it's still stuck on him, but it's old. Tiny so top it's hat. so it's all Little tailcoat. But it's all tattered and nasty. I mean, it just looks like the cone of shame when dogs get the cone of shame. Well, Bart, that's why Bart. You want to know why Bartleby's upset? Mm -hmm. Why he's got this look? Now you know. <laughs> so anyway, this was kind of how they were. They were built and, you know, I may, you know, I may look at that face and, and go immediately go get some toad reference or he something. He does have a little bit of um, Mike Wazowski vibe to him. <laughs> does Mike Wazowski. That's one we did. We didn't do. Okay, that's the body. That's definitely, I can see that. The Mike Wazowski body. We didn't do Cyclops. That was another one I wanted. You know, again, same with like how far down into the classic myths do we go? The Greek and Roman myths. Because there's all kinds of cool mythological creatures there. Alfonso, Bartleby Piccadilly. <laughs> That's good. Bartleby Piccadilly. Yeah, I think he was a uh, glamoured 
himself as a dog join circus. Oh. Are we still working on the book we're doing together? Yes, we are. We can't show you anything yet, but we're very excited about it. Super Join exciting. circus in what? When when do Bringling Brothers have a circus? It's like the teens, the twenties. In let's just say in nineteen hundreds. Ate too much. Founded in eighteen eighty four. Yeah. So there you go. So there By you go. five of the seven Ringling Brothers. That's but I'm thinking of P.T. Barnum, not Ringling. Anyway. I'm thinking of Greatest Showman is what I'm thinking of. Anyway, there you go. There's a... Barnum Bailey was 1919. Yeah, there 18. you go. So there's... there's a, I would go find photo reference of a of a dog in a circus. And, That's uh, how you start building it. Then like you start once build, you get that seed. And then you also... Then so, you'd start referencing stuff. I'd start referencing stuff. And then now you start to have the story. And that's how in... Um, I want to say... That kind of stuff would happen in the field guide. A lot of this caption writing was me. And then Holly was doing all the folklore research. So I'm just drawing these things. Um, not all brownies look like Thimbletack. This fellow named Tam Turtledove lived in a very old home in a nearby town. As with many sightings I've researched, only the children in the household could see him. Tam was a mender. At night, he would patch holes in clothing and even fix shoes. I wonder if the cobblers in the fairy tale... The elves and the shoemaker were, in fact, brownies. This is just what we just did. I'm just drawing this guy going, oh, what if this guy did this? Or what if he did that? You know? And you're so, like, oh, here's his name. Here's a little bit more detail. There's a little more on him. him. Yeah. And then off we go. Kind you of thing. know what thing. that is, T? Imagination. <laughs> yeah. Imagination. <laughs> All right. So that's a... That's I a, love that you knew what that was. I knew. I'm, I'm living it. What else we got, Ange? What else can we draw? I don't know. What do you guys want Tony to draw? We just want, we're just glad to be... Uh, yeah. to be to I know. Be we're just happy here with you guys. Come just on. Just hanging out, drawing. Uh, hope everybody is currently healthy, hanging in there. It sounds like there's two things that I see reoccurring in this stream of comments. One is people who got puppies and dogs. Oh, are you and serious? And the other is people who got COVID. Boy, oh boy. Yeah, it didn't matter if you were boosted and... Mm -hmm. And 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 um, vaxxed is some still the, the Omicron. Just hope everybody's healthy. Now. I do. I hope everyone's healthy and and hanging in there and doing well. We're trying to hang in there and do well. Um, Ooh, Cyclops, cool. Yeah, you know, I I was just thinking that it, I don't have an elephant skull handy. That's where the Cyclops myth came from, Ange. I don't know if you knew that, but elephants. Um, if you looked at an elephant skull, I'm, I don't, I'm drawing this from memory, so I'm sure it's completely inaccurate. They have this huge hole where their trunk would be. It's kind of like that, I think, is kind of like an elephant skull. Then these would be the, you know, the tusks. And then they have the bottom munchers like this. Munchers. <laughs> molars. All, it's like a mouth. Yeah, that's the technical term. It's like a mouthful oh. of molars. Right? So you, um, so this, this big hole here, Ange, is where the trunk would be, right? So this is a giant... Yeah, here we go. Here, we'll show you. Elephant skull. There you go. Can you can give you an idea. If I can get it nice and centered and bring it in. Look at that. That's an elephant skull. That is where the Cyclops um, myth came from. That was another one. Um, also, that we believe the griffin myth came from Protoceratops, which was a, a, uh, a dinosaur, a frilled dinosaur like a triceratops and um so i think that's where they they believe the the cyclops um no amelia amelia has covid right now oh man oh amelia i'm sorry to hear that i hope uh we're wishing you a speedy recovery hope it's not knocking you out too hard get some rest hopefully we're we're helping brighten your day a little bit um yes i did think about putting cyclops in the spiderwick books but it it opened a can of of, of worms and i don't know if you remember just do you do you know do right. you do right. medusa you do you do pegasus Greek do you do like yes. it was so much then there was even talk of like maybe there was a correspondent 
it, that was doing all that. We definitely thought about Spiderwick corresponding with other uh, people around the world. We definitely thought about that, and and that certainly came into play with the um, the Beyond Spiderwick books that there would have been uh, people all over the United States that he was corresponding with. So I, you know, I don't know. Cyclopses are kind of weird. I'm trying to draw his... They're just like, are they just like people bodies? But like... It's like a giant. I mean, there's definitely versions. You know, it's all like, you know, does it, does it have long hair? Does it, does it, does it have hair? Yeah, you drew it with long hair ones. I remember that. Yeah, stringy kind of... Stringy kind of bald dude. You know, what's the eye like? How big is the eye? I mean, that's one way to do it. I, I definitely have spent time drawing them before because they're such a weird head shape that it's it's like where can you go with it you know but i think i would start honestly i think i would um, it's funny because i when i think cyclops i know that it's more humanoid but i of course my brain goes right to beholder because i just think because it one looks eyeball. yeah yeah so i actually think i if i had to design it i would start with the body shape first and i would just do a very kind of almost gestural i don't know why i'm thinking of this kind of bowling pin Alfonso said he finds it limiting to have an expression on a cyclops. Maybe. I don't know. I mean, that's a good challenge. I don't know. This is... I was like, almost he's got like elephant. Like, I, when I did the Giants and Spiderwick, I'd give him... Uh, uh, elemental. He's cool. I, when I did the Giants and Spider, I gave him these elephant feet. I kind of was thinking of these kind of elephant-like. But kinda... also kind of schmoo-like. He is a little like a schmoo. <laughs> So maybe the head's bigger. I don't know. Like, I'm just thinking of this. I mean, the other thing. Oh, look at. Watch this. Watch this. What if we go this way, Ange? He's just kind of. It's all kind I of. I dig that. That's like a giant. It's all kind I of like set in. It's all kind of set. And then you give it the t the elephant. Yeah, he doesn't really need a neck. You give him the elephant tusks. I'm guessing they would have a a strong brow, right? I feel like a brow would be. I got to figure. I got to figure. Elephant tusks are are modified molars, right? So they're just teeth that are cutting through. So the the tusks have to be part of the mouth, which is weird. So right. So how, you don't want to put them too far away because then that means the mouth has to be able to support the. So it gets gets weird. Too close to eye. Oh, too close to the eye. Well, I know like if for things, if you want him to appear giant, the smaller we make that eye, the bigger he's going to appear. The bigger we make the eye, the smaller in scale he'll he'll seem. Um, you know, almost like a like a walrus. I don't know if I'm saying that right. What if the like if it's it's got that kind of like that. You know, they're just so big. There's just so much heavy, like, and it's kind of wordy. Like, almost like, I'd almost look at that maybe for the, I'm just, I'm literally thinking it and I'd have to go research it all. But little tiny ears. This is the eye. Um, I do like the split lip is kind of interesting. Make him more uh, creature, less humanoid. I mean, the other, th yeah, it also depends on how, where the nose and what the nose is. Like, you know, is it just nostrils? You know what I mean? Or is like it like a close up of that head? Yeah, I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. Let me get there. I'm trying to, I feel like I'm on to something. One would be broken. All right, let's see if we can figure, make some sense out of all these, these little marks that really don't amount to a whole lot. All right, let me see. So we're gonna. This is the head inch. Okay. So we're kind of going again with that skull, but we're thinking of like like a like a elephant seal. Okay. So it's got all a this a lot of blubber around it. So, which would make it. 
I, if I, it's, I think that's twofold. I think that's also like a dog, Ange, where, because uh, it could still have this Listen, skull. Got it, suggestions: blowhole nose, pig snout. I thought about a pig snout. The skull can still look like this. They talk about this with dinosaurs now, where the skull can be this, but the thing could have been covered in blubber. Dogs have all that extra. Um, uh, flesh around their neck because that's where they generally attack. So if you have all this extra flesh around the neck, it prevents any vital, it'd be like your uh, esophagus and your trachea from getting damaged, right? So maybe the, maybe these cyclopses have that, right? So um, anyway, I, I feel like the the eyeball's low because it'd be a brow, right? Yeah. Card that looked like this. Oh yeah, I had a magic card with Cyclops. I just posed as it. It was just me. It's yeah. just scrawny me with with. Hmm, I like that monobrow. He's got a brow. He got maybe the sun where the sun. You know, he's got like crow's feet around it. And then the nose is really compelling, right? So yeah, someone said like a pig nose. You could do almost like a. A nose that, like a pig nose that comes. So this is like, it's like facing down. I don't know if that's it. And that feels weird. Dane mm -hmm. Nielsen, thanks for joining us. It's been almost an hour and Dane just went back, is, has to go back to work. Have a good day at work. Thank you for joining us. We'll, we'll archive this one after. Put it up on the YouTube channel. We'll put it up on the YouTube. We'll do all the things. I feel like this kind of nose. I was looking at a lot of cat noses for Spiderwick. I remember that was like a big thing. I was really on this kind of, these mammalian noses that weren't human. So he's kind of got almost like this cat nose. And then, I'm guessing maybe the, and maybe just the males have these, these tusks for fighting, you know, just like in, in nature. I feel like I got something, Ange. Maybe? I don't know. Little ears. Oh, he's like, Arr. he's like that. He's kind of like. Yeah, I just got to get that nose. I feel like the nose is, right? We're so used to it, two eyes on either side of a nose, right? So then I what do you. I kind of see where the nose should be. Like. I feel like it's almost that big kind of troll nostril, maybe, kind of thing. I mean, you could definitely do it where it's just a much, it's like a flatter yeah. nose. It's just yeah. more like this. Yeah. And it's just real. With a little ring in it or something cool. Well, ring would mean he was like a beast of burden. He'd mm. been he'd been captured at some point and was being led around like a cow. Mm. So I don't know, but yeah, you know. It also, you know. The other thing again, we can make the eye. The uh, the other you, you know you could make the eye the center of the eye like the pupil, the iris, um, not a circle, you could, which might covered in moles. <laughs> he's <laughs> definitely mole. he's gonna have a lot of moles, mole, folks. Mole. Guys, we started off with nothing, and we're kind of ending up with, you know. The, the Arthur Spiderwick's Greek correspondent who's like, wait, it's not just fairies. Back to work. Back to work. Uh, he's, uh, Solomon's not the only one who's got to get back to work, Angie. I think I got to get back to work, right? Yeah. We got I a busy so. day. We've got a Zoom. This is our life now. Lots of Zooms, Zooms, lots of meetings, lots of figuring things out. All for your entertainment. But, um... Yeah, little Cyclops and the Disney Hercules. I can see that, Alfonso. Uh, yeah, I forgot about that Cyclops. Was he this wide? I don't remember. He was. Yeah, I like he your was... little tusk you added. That's cool. Yeah, maybe. I mean, there might be something there. Interesting. In from from nothing, nothing to something. Yeah, that kind of. Also, I gotta say, gives me a little bit of a Gamorian gar uh, guard vibe. Yeah, there's a little bit of that. That kind of the the pig guard, which is very orky. He's yeah. kind of orky. Yeah, I still a, I still feel like there's something. Although they're real ripped in the uh, in the new they've Boba been, Fett in the show. Boba Fett. They've been hitting the gym. I don't know. I still feel like there's something to the Cyclops that we haven't seen, and I'd have to keep going. I feel like there's still something yet to be seen that could make it inventive. That was my big thing with Spider-Man, because it felt like we'd seen it before. 
and it wasn't the right answer. I had I to keep like going. With you, but this is kind of your process, right? You start thinking about it. Your first thought is that you think of all the things you've seen. Right. And then you dig into the sketchbook further and you'd be like, oh, I really like this kind of maybe this natural history bent of inspiration. I'll dig into some reference and then come back to it and infuse that into it. Yeah, yeah. And you're like, oh, where does this live? What's his story that starts building out a little bit of his backstory? Yeah. Maybe it's just almost like a uh, like a wall a walrus. Am I saying that right, Ange? Walrus? Walrus, like where the nose is actually way up here. And you do, you have that kind of... Oh, interesting. No? You got those oh, things it's, going it's on? Kinda, it's kind of cat-like now. Just got like a little kitty. Is that bad? That may not be bad. That may be something interesting that's... I don't know. The idea of the eye and the nose so close together and, and then... The, I don't know. Maybe. Interesting. To be, to be uh, determined, Ange. To be determined. We'll figure it out. But uh, in the meantime... Does he have hairs? Little hairs? I don't know. Yeah, I've got like a little bit of hair. Yeah, I wasn't I like sure that. if he's got a lot of hair. I'm thinking of those... I know uh, elephant seals and walruses, they have like... the. Oh. Yeah, it's like a bumpy skin. So I think it's like that. And it'd be all scarred from yeah, that's cool. fighting and doing whatever they do. Anyway, Cyclops, there it is. But in the meantime, Ange, we should um, we should give some stuff away. Yes. Okay. So, truth be told, the conversation to come back today uh, began when we had an idea to share some swag. Oh yeah, let's save that for next time. We we covered so much stuff. We'll we'll throw some in, but. We didn't even talk about it. Let's save it for next okay, time. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's okay. save it but for next time. But that's where it came from. It There's more things. It did. There's, There's more. more. We've missed you guys so much. We have lots to give away to show our love. Um, anyway, um, before we get to the junk pot, this has been sitting. Kylie Pitts. I don't know if you're listening or if anyone knows Kylie. Your package came back. Is we, that a junk pot? That's a junk pot. That's definitely a junk pot. And it went... It left in December of 2020, and it was an insufficient address. So, Kylie, if you're listening or watching, um, send us a note. Send us a note. Have a friend send a note, a direct message on the old Facebook page, and we'll get you your uh, junk pot. We aim to deliver. We aim to please. Ange? You ready to... Uh... The thing is, it's been so long. I mean, it's like I had just like my brain's been wiped clean of anyone who has it's won. Oh, oh, except you have the list right here. Oh, that's perfect. Folks, we still have the list from 2020 of all the Junk Pot winners. It has been taped to my desk for two years. <laughs> Holy cow. I don't think I see this person's name. Oh, well, that's exciting. Um, So I'm excited about that. So let me know when you're ready. I'll do the drum roll. Okay. We'll do a junk pot. Yes, I'm double, double, triple, triple, quadruple checking. I do not see this person's name. It kind of jumped out to me because it just sounds like a cool name. Um. Okay. <laughs> you guys ready? Yeah. All right. You, wait, do you get to put the music on again? What do we do? Uh, do you want to put it on? Sure. Hold on. Hold on. I'm we're getting on the it. music ready. Again, yes. we're, we're kind of like your parents now, where we're like, wait, what button? Do what we, happened? Who, what the where button? are we? Oh, what button do we hit? There you go. All That's right. it. It was so good to see you guys. It was great. We will see figure out a time, maybe on the weekends. So I'm not sure yet, but as we're working, um, certainly on the new covers for Wandla, we'll talk about that next time. Um, and. Um, Restoring the Spiderwick Field Guide, I think would be fun to let you guys sit in on a session of that. And uh, in the meantime, it's so good to see you all and see all those familiar names. Um, in the meantime, let's give away some some lousy sketches. You ready, Ange? Okay, sounds good. I'm getting ready to do the drum roll. Person's name. Okay, here comes the drum roll. And I don't ready? know where it went, uh -oh. but I know that the first name. Uh oh, you want to double check? I can stall. No, you want me to no, stall? it's okay. You got I, it. I know, I know this person's first name. Okay. And so then you can just comment, and then I'll know, be reminded of your last name. Whatever. Okay. Here comes the drum roll. You ready? Okay. First of all, thank you all for joining us. This was so much fun. We've missed you so much. We missed and you I all. have to tell you, this brightened my Definitely. day. Definitely. This is going to be a highlight for the week. All right. You ready? Yes. Bring it on. Where the junk pot is? <laughs> oh, where did it go? Tabitha Boston Brook. 
Tabitha Bossenbrook, you've won some amazing sketches of Hog Squeal from the Spiderwick Chronicles and the skull of a Cyclops, not to mention whatever swag we find around the studio and shove in an envelope and send you, please. And one of Tony's moles that's been lasered <laughs> off. You get, you get a mole. <laughs> anyway, um, send us a direct message with your mailing address. We'll get it out to you this week. Thank you all for tuning in. We love you. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye, friends. That's right. Say bye, puppies. <laughs> <laughs>